Okay, so I don't know how much was said about this tool uh, in the previous talk because my tie is not that good, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a bit about it. It's a tool that is developed by Google, obviously. Um, not entirely, though, not entirely. It's an open source project, comes from the Jupyter Notebook. I don't know why it's flicking, but yeah. So it's a really good tool. Uh, I would say it's not the great, the best tool for beginners, uh, but it can be used for beginners, and, and it's a good way to get into the, into the field of programming and progressing, because there's a lot of tutorials that are out there using this tool. This is based on a tool called Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook, it's similar to this, but it's the actual open source project that you can actually run on your own computer, or you can run it on, on different servers, right? Why are we using Colab? because it's easier for us. I give you the URL, you can just access, we can start working. We don't need ever anybody to, 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 to get uh, anything installed or anything, right? So we just access this uh, and we start coding. Um, I'm also gonna do uh, some introduction into Python and then we will start coding and see how, how this works. So Python, it's also an open source project, of course. Um, this is oh, this is the python.org. So it's also an open source project. Um, so you, if you get good at programming, you can actually collaborate to Python. You can download the actual open the code for from Python. You can add your improvements, or you can help with any of the libraries that are out there. Um, it, why why learn Python? Well, there's, there's many reasons for learning Python. It's a very good Python for things like rapid prototyping. So even though it's not the most efficient uh, way of doing things, um, in the end, uh, it might not be the most efficient language. It is very efficient when it comes to the time you spend working on it. So it's very, if you want to prototype something very quickly, if you want to come up with a test, a solution, see if you can actually get something uh, out of your idea, it's a good way to do it. Um, it's also very, as I said, it's very fast for, for, for developing solutions, so um, there's a lot of people using it. The, it can be used in a very wide range of areas. So there's this library, some Python for pretty much anything you can do since uh, web development. So I don't know if you guys heard about Django, that's for web development. You can do AI, there's tons of AI that's done in Python. Keras is one of the main libraries that we actually teach when we're teaching um, AI in, in in the academy. Why Keras? It's, 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 it's not, as I said, it's not the best uh, option uh, maybe for uh, developing an AI for a self-driving car, but it's a good way to get into the field and to get an overview how to do it. And you can get pretty much good results that you can use uh, in certain environments. Um, more things that you can do with Python. Um, I, you can do robots with Python. You can do um, desktop applications in Python. You can do lots of things. Um, I think you can, if you click around, I, I always encourage people to go into the website. It's very, um, it's very important that you actually learn how to do things uh, by yourself. So one of the key things that I al we always encourage in our, in our courses and workshops is to check out the documentation. So as we go through uh, coding together, um, the documentation will play a key part. So every time we need something, we come here and we look for the documentation. We can figure out the, the answer. Why we do this? Because we're not here all the time. So. Okay, I'm here today and tomorrow, so you can ask me questions, feel free to do it. But after tomorrow, maybe we don't see each other again, right? So the best thing that you can get out of one of our workshops or one of our classes is to be self-sufficient. So we prepare everyone uh, to know where to look for information and, and, and how to find the people that will answer your questions, right? So one, one of the main things, the first main thing main place that you have to use uh, when using any project or 
any, any language, is their documentation, because that's where they, they try to explain how things work, right? Um, there's also other sources. Um, you can go to Google, try to Google your questions. You might end up, most of the time, on something called Stack Overflow. So I don't know, some, some of the programmers that uh, uh, know that uh, will probably end up there. I end up there pretty much all of the time because I'm really bad with the syntax. I tend to forget that every now and then. I just know what I want to do, but I forgot how to do it. So type it on Google, end up on Stack Overflow. It's a website for question answering for programmers. So um, especially, uh, you'll find yourself uh, there pretty much all the time. Um, so that's that for the Python part. It's a community-driven project as an open source project. Up until recently, was uh, lead by this guy uh, called Widow Van Rossum, uh, which was the founder of this language. Um, he stepped down recently, and now it's uh, uh, just driven f uh, by the rest of the community now. And um, yeah, so let's get um, a bit uh, into the call up tool. Oh, let me. All right. So if you have any problems, any questions at any time, we have uh, about 10 minutes, if I'm not wrong, right? So on these 10 minutes, we're going to try to uh, mess around with uh, how call up works. And then uh, probably at 4, uh, I'll go uh, in more detail on the Python language. So uh, when you write Python, basically, we write different instructions. And then the Python interpreter will execute those instructions for us. That is how it works. And what we're going to do, what we can do in Colab is that we can do that online. And we can just write it using our browser. Then this will run in some server on the Google uh, data center. And then we'll get a result. That's how we're going to write everything here. So there's different parts here that um, you, you use this. and. You, you probably uh, had to open your uh, Google account because this basically uh, will save a file into your Google Drive. So this is a, as a regular file like any other doc file. It will, it will, see, it will be a, a call up file, which is an, it's called a notebook. So you will find uh, through your learning process, if you keep learning, in, if you keep digging into um, Python solutions, uh, trying to learn more Python, you will find a lot of notebooks. So these notebooks are very useful for learning because they have uh, parts of code and parts of explanations. So this tool is widely used for tutorials. Um, you, you, uh, that's why we think it's very important for, for you guys to learn how these tutorials, uh, these notebooks work. So you can actually learn how to run other people's tutorials. There's a lot of them out there. Um, here, uh, you can see there's this, the files. The most important part, in the end, uh, you can actually just uh, close this. And you can just uh, click on File and create a new uh, Python 3 notebook. Um, one thing that I didn't mention, and it's somehow important in Python, there's, so it, as, as an open source, as an it project, basically, um, it evolves in time, and it gets different versions. There's two main versions. There's different versions in Python, but there's two main ones. There's a Python 2 and a Python 3. And something to take into account is that they have uh, big differences between them. So whatever is written in Python 2 is not usually compatible with whatever is written in Python 3 and, and all that, right? So be careful when you're looking, especially when you're looking into the documentation, if you're writing Python 3, which is my recommendation, if you're studying right now, Python 3 is the latest. So just go ahead with Python 3 and, and try to uh, not even look at Python 2. So you should be on the safe side if you, if, you, if you code everything in Python 3. So we teach Python 3 because it's the latest. And there's, uh, I would say there's no, there's no reason on, on, on actually trying to, trying to teach the old the old one. Let me see if we get the call up. Oh, I need to sign in. Let me just open this in one of my 
tabs. Where's my tabs? Oh, here. I'll just open this thing. Collab. Hmm. Wi-Fi is getting low. Slow. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to learn, if uh, I manage to load my uh, call up tool. I'll create a new one, new one here. If you guys have any questions at any point, or if you guys run into any problems, uh, feel free to feel free to run uh, to um, lift your hands, and I'll I'll be happy to answer any questions. Right. So the way we do the 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 the, the workshops is basically we uh, we open one of these tools, we sit together, and we write code uh, all together, right? So things to take into account about the, the call up uh, tool is that we can do two things. We can write text. You can see it up there. I don't know if it's too small for you, but maybe if you guys have it on your own computer, you can see we can write code and text. There's two types of writing that we can do, right? So we have something called cells, right? This is a cell. So what we have here is a cell. The, this, this little square with a play on the, on, the, on the left, that's a cell. So if I go here and click on text, it will create another cell, right? That is text. So there's two types of cells. It says cells for text, cells for code, right? So this one is for text, the previous one is for code. I have two cells. I can go back here, and now I'm editing the first cell, which is code, right? So here I can write code, and here I can write text on this one down here, right? If you look at the, the tools bar that you get there, it looks like a text editor, normal text editor, right? So this is why these are popular for tutorials, because when you write text, you can write the explanation, and then when you write code, you can write the code, right? So that's why we, we use it um, very frequently in our workshops. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to remove this one. We can remove uh, delete cell here, for example. And I'm going to just keep the, 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 the code cell here. And I think we have five minutes. Uh, I'm going to write the first line of code. And the first line of code that everyone learns when we learn a language is the hello world. That is the typical one that everyone learns, right? So let's go ahead and uh, print the hello world. So basically, the way to print in Python is that we do print, right? Pretty straightforward. Open, close brackets. And then we pass a string here. So we use double quotes. And between the, the quotes, we can put whatever we want. So we're going to put hello world. Right? So now, if we want to run this code, we just have to click on the run cell icon here. And if we click, uh, my mouse is not very good. If we click there, um, Google seems to be a bit slow. We get the result right under, right? So what Google is doing, we say print hello, uh, uh, hello world, and we get hello world, right? Is everyone on the same page? Everyone got the hello world? Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> Yay, first line of code. Now, let's do another one, more code. We click again, right? We can write more code in the next cell, so we can print something else, right? So I can print, let's not print hello world, just print something that you just want to print. I'll print hello false age. Then I'll run it, click on the run, and there you go. We get the second one, right? So we run the code on our cell. 
Um, so we can also write um, more than one line in one cell. So we can have, let's, let's put the two prints together. So we can have more than one line in the same cell. Right, so here I'm putting two lines in the same cell. So when I execute this, I'm getting the result of both lines, right? So you can group the code in cells as much as you want, right? So that is how, how call-up works. Now, because we're running out of time, I'm going to show you how to do a text. And we're going to leave it here. If you want to um, get some more of these Python workshops, we can see each other after the, after the break, right? Uh, let me show you how to do the text. It's pretty straightforward. We can do text here. And then we get a text cell here, right? And then we can just write whatever we want, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write something. So you can see it's just basic text, right? So when you put it here, you press, um, you, can, you can run it. Uh, basically, there's a shortcut to run it that I use. So if you do Shift Enter, it will run the shell. But if you click on some other, it will just keep the text there, right? You can format the text. You can make it nicer, make it a title. So this is the actual view. On the right, you get the actual view of how it will look. And this is uh, the markup language where you can just obviate for now. You just uh, use the, the bar on the top, and it should be fine. So this is how it will look. So if you, if you see, I, cre I created a title. So I click on the, on the title button. So now, if I click somewhere else, you see that my text looks like a title, right? So I got my text looking uh, as a title. And then I can keep writing code here, right? So because it's already for uh, 3.30, we're going to stop right here. Anyone has any questions about the uh, coding, about the call app? Uh, feel free to ask me uh, now or later. Uh, and then if you guys want to learn a bit more, I'll see you after the coffee break. I think it's on X02, if I'm not wrong. But check the schedule, because I might be. All right? Thank you very much. Yeah? Why can't you just take the same one We're using this because uh, not everyone has Python installed in their computers. So it's much faster if we go into the online tool. And um, another reason is uh, I, I usually, because I, as I said, there's a lot of tutorials that come in this form. In Colab Google, I think you can do, it's mainly Python, but I think you can do I don't know. I don't know how. I, I think it's mainly Python. I would say in Colab it's mainly Python. If you if you click on file, right? Yeah. Let's see. You can basically create Python. Yeah. So you you can. I don't know about the Jupyter notebook, which is the tool that is used by. Because I think I know they they have. They have uh, uh, some efforts into into building some other kernels for other languages, but initially it's Python. Yeah, but there's other online tools that you can use for other languages. Um, we choose this one because it's actually pretty new. We think it's going to have uh, a long-term life. It's very used, 
especially in the fields like data science and, and artificial intelligence and for teaching and tutorials. So yeah, that's the main reason we use this one. And to avoid problems with installations and different configurations in computers and all that. Yeah, it's just speed up everything. Yeah, well, for learning, it's, it's a good thing, right? Then you can try to figure out how to install it and all that, which is different for every, per for every computer, right? You might have Windows or, well, I don't know, it just depends. All right? Okay, guys, so enjoy your coffee, and uh, see you later. <laughs>